What's up guys, I'm Steve-O and finally I am at Toronto at the Air Canada Centre one last time against the Montreal Canadiens. Watching post to post. Hello and welcome to Post to Post, the channel where we discuss all things hockey and all teams. This is a very frustrating video for me to make especially after the news that John Tavares chose the Maple Leafs. I'm sitting here with the big Maple Leafs fan, Andrew Pillick. The title of this video is something like the viewpoint of the Montreal, or the Montreal Canadiens from the viewpoint of a Maple Leafs fan. So I want to talk a little bit about me being a Canadiens fan the last 10 or so years and your thoughts of the team and where it's going. So this is actually my first jersey. This thing is tiny. Um, I got this when I was very young. And uh, I've been a Canadiens fan for a long time. So I was a Canadiens fan at the very young age. And then when Patrick Waugh got traded, I switched to Colorado because I followed my favorite player. And then I came back to Montreal. And I have a lot of jerseys up here in my collection of Montreal. The far one over there was uh, when Pierre Turgeon used to play. And he was my favorite player for a while. So there's 77 on the back of there. This was their Winter Classic one against Boston, I believe, in 2015. This one is the 100 uh, Classic. This is actually the Goats jersey. Uh, this was against Ottawa. And this one is the Adidas uh, current jersey. And this one over here is the Reebok home from the previous seasons before Adidas. So as you can tell, I have a lot of Canadians merchandise. Now, I want to go through year by year starting in 2010. 2010 was a really interesting year for Montreal because they just snuck into the playoffs. I'm not sure if you remember how 2010 played out. Yeah. But they snuck in, they played Washington in the first round. Washington was absolutely dynamite that season. Montreal beat Washington in seven games. It like it was freak everyone was freaking out. Yeah. And then they had to play Pittsburgh in the second round. Well, Montreal beat Pittsburgh in seven games in that series as well. I had, the city was so alive, it was it was insane. It was a great time to be a Canadiens fan. And then they lost to Philadelphia very easily. Very frustrating. 2011, okay, you know, the team did pretty good last year. 2011 is going to be a good year. We just took down Washington and Pittsburgh last year. 2011 is going to be a great year. We finished sixth. Sixth in the East. We're starting, you know, it's, a, it's an improvement. Uh, first round loss against Boston. <laughs> All right, that's, you know, th things happen. Let's, let's have a better year next time. 2012, uh, it's going to be a good year. It's going to be a good year. Finished 15th, dead last in the Eastern Conference. <laughs> Drafted Galchenyuk. Galchenyuk is no longer a part of the Montreal Canadiens. Just thought I'd put that out there. 2013. Okay, you know what? It's a bounce back year. We had a bad year. Let's bounce back. Comes in second in the Eastern Conference. Let's Boom. go. Let's do this. There it is. Uh, first round lost to Ottawa. That's very unfortunate. Okay, you know what? Stuff happens. 2014. 2014 is going to be a great year. Finished fourth. Forced in the east. Forced in the east. Carry prices on fire. We're gonna do this. Get all the way to the conference finals. Take down Tampa. Take down I think Ottawa. Get to the conference finals against the Rangers. Carey Price gets injured by Chris Kreider. Montreal loses. Very frustrating. 2015. All right, we made it to the conference finals. This year is gonna be good. Comes in second in the east. Here we go. Second round loss to Tampa Bay. <sighs> so frustrating. 2016. Finished 13th overall, drafted Sergachev. Sergachev is no longer part of the Montreal Canadiens. Mm. 2017, finished 4th. Heck yeah, bounce back year. Let's do this. First round loss to the, to the uh, New York Rangers. <sighs> Frustrating. Frustrating. All right, let's, 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 let's ignore that. Stuff happens. 2018, finished 14th. Fantastic. It's not been fun to be a Canadiens fan other than the year in 2010. Uh, which was exciting. 2014 was exciting as well. Other than that, it's been very frustrating. On October 24th, I released a video on this channel, October 24th, 2017, talking about Mark Bergevin and the trades that he's made and the stuff that he's done since he's came into power. So he's acquired, and I did, and I did this by points. He's a, he, I went through all the trades in the video. Every single trade that he's made, I talked about them. And uh, I added up the points that the players that he's acquired has have accumulated in Montreal and the points that the players who left have accumu accumulated in other teams. It took a long time. <laughs> so on October, as of October 24th, the acquired points was 317 of all the trades. That seems okay. Traded away, 
356 points. So the for a team that has so much trouble scoring, he's actually at a negative 30 or a minus 39 points differential or goal differential, whatever, not goal differential, but, but yeah, points differential of the players that he traded away versus the players that he acquired. Um, that, to me, says a lot. And he's under contract, I think, until 2021 or 2022. Yikes. He's not going anywhere. No. Claude Julien is, I think, locked in for the next four or five years at $5 million or whatever. He's not going anywhere. No. Montreal's not going to change their coaching staff. They're not going to fire Mark Bertram. If they if they were going to fire him, he would have already been gone this year. So Probably. Montreal Canadiens fans don't expect him to get fired because he's not going anywhere. As a Leafs fan, you've been through your hard times as well. Oh, yes. So you have... You have a lot of, you've been through a lot of grieving, a lot of unsuccessful teams year after year. Things are finally starting to turn around for your team. Uh, Toronto has its mortal enemies. I think Boston is probably on that list. Oh, yeah. Um, Buffalo Buffalo has a little bit of a rivalry with Toronto. A little bit. But the Toronto Montreal rivalry is probably Toronto's biggest, biggest rivalry. Oh, yeah. It's the biggest one. How do you feel about the Canadians objectively as a Leafs fan? Like right now? Right now. Where? How do you feel about this team right now and where they're going? I feel bad for you. Do honestly, you actually? I really do. I feel bad for Habs fans because it's this is the the Montreal Canadiens. This is a, this is a historic franchise. I can't ignore that. This this team has been great. And hearing you talk about all these first round exits, I'm thinking, man, I'd love to just get there every year, you know? I guess. Yeah. And but now it's it's looking like it's getting real bad. Patch Reddy is probably not working out. Yeah, it's not looking good. That Galchenyuk trade, we'll have to see how that works out because uh, I'm not really sure if that's going to go in your favor, to be honest. Yeah, we'll see, but I don't know. Oh, oh man. I, I honestly, the one person I feel the worst, like I feel so bad for Carey Price. Oh, me too. Not, I, I mean, I don't feel that bad because he's getting paid a lot of money, but the fact that he's never going to win a Stanley Cup, Ooh. and I say that with absolute confidence. Wow. He'll never win a Stanley Cup in Montreal. I feel terrible. He'll go, he'll go down as probably the greatest goalie to never win a Stanley Cup. I, I love Carey Price, and I'm glad you brought that up because uh, I'm a huge fan of Carey Price. And being a, a goaltender, I modeled a lot of what I did after Carey Price because he's so good. Like, he's just so good. Positionally, he's incredible. Yeah, he, he stays calm most of the time. Uh, I think that watching him, just just off of, just being a fan of hockey, you, you have to love the guy. He's, he's great off the ice. He's a great ambassador for the NHL, mm-hmm. and hearing you say that he'll never win a Stanley Cup, it, it's it sucks even for a Leafs fan. Like I don't want to see Montreal win the Stanley Cup. Let's be real here. <laughs> but seeing Carey Price hold a Stanley Cup, I, I'd probably be like, you know what, good for him. I, yeah. I really liked him, and I, and I loved Subban. But I mean, it's kind of like the Ovechkin thing. Not everyone likes Washington, um, but it's good to see. And not even even not everyone even likes Ovechkin, but the fact that he's he is such a good player. The fact that he did win a Stanley Cup, I think people were happy for him oh, on yeah. a personal level. So I think people would feel, even Toronto fans would feel, like you said, they wouldn't mind seeing Carey Price win a Stanley Cup for him personally. I have no hope in this team over the next couple of years. Their draft system, if you look at like Toronto, the Marlies, that team was incredible. They have so much talent in their in their farm team. Montreal has no one. Uh, they have a couple, but other than those couple, there's really no one. They had the th- third overall draft pick this year. Uh what do you think, man? I don't know. I, I watched Zadina play. I, I thought that they were going to choose Zadina. Me too. I understand why they didn't, because after watching him play, he cherry picks a lot. He plays a lot on the power play. A lot of his stats are padded. Um, he is a very, very good player, but um, they drafted positionally and not by the player, and that's not something that I would have done. Um, we'll see. I think it was kind of a, sh- a kick in the nuts to Carey Price, because this is a guy who is... On the entering the last half of his career, he's probably already had his good years. Yeah. Uh, so you're basically telling Carey Price, we're not drafting a player who can win now. We're drafting a player who might be able to win in four or five years once he develops. Yeah, that's not. So good. you think Carey Price is going to be happy about that? Plus, with all the other stuff going on, I, I don't think Carey Price wants to go through a rebuilding process of the next three or four years. If he had have known that, he probably wouldn't have signed the contract he did in Montreal a year and a half ago. Right. Um, so. Anyway, I'm very frustrated frustrated as a Canadiens fan. I don't know the answer, but I think that the answer is change in structure and management. I'm not I don't blame Claude Julian. I don't think he's been given the team that he wants or needs to to do the stuff that he wants uh, or hit the way that he approaches success and structure. So, 
I put the failures on Mark Bergevin, on Jeff Molson, because Jeff Molson owns the team and he's friends with Mark Bergevin. And I think that friend friendly relationship has hindered um, the success of this team. And the thing that bothers me the most, and French fans watching, French first fans watching, French speaking people, you'll be upset with this, but the fact that they have to have a coach and a GM and whoever else that speaks French as a requirement to work for Montreal, coach in Montreal, is, I think, a really bad omen. Because you shouldn't hire someone based on their language. You should hire someone based on their success and the best man out there. And when you ignore those people who can't speak French, that's just shooting yourself in the foot, in my opinion, and you deserve to lose. Yep. So um, you should fix that, Montreal. Uh, feel free to disagree with me on that point, but I know a lot of people do have the same opinion. It's a bit of a controversial opinion, but that's okay. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm just frustrated, and I can see that. <laughs> I, I I have hope that the team will get better, but not for four or five years. It's going to be a while. It's, it's going to be a while. It's not going to happen next year. They're going to be um, they're going to be a dumpster team. It, they're going to be in the in the slumps. If they get lucky and have a good season, they might sneak into the playoffs, even with a good season. They just don't have the structure of the players. They're so thin up the middle. It's it's out. It's out. Well, that actually went pretty far. Yeah, it did. Um, <laughs> uh, it's done. So, Canadians fans, let's stick together. Um, don't switch teams. Don't. You can have your other teams that you cheer for, but let's. Mm, if you're you gonna, think? if you're gonna cheer for another team, let's choose a different one than, than Toronto. There's, there's already gonna be enough bandwagon fans for Tavares in Toronto. So let's just, let's pick a new team. Pick Arizona or someone. Uh, so, anyways, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Uh, if you are a Canadians fan, tell me your frustrations down below and what you think could make the team better. I'll probably do a more in-depth video of this team before the next season starts. Anyway, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. AP, thanks for joining me. Hope you guys can go check out his channel. I'll link it below. If you like this video, hit the like button down below. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one. Adios.